Hi, I'm Nick with Songbird Entertainment. We're going to be setting up our DIY DJ rental system today to show you what it looks like set up and some tips and tricks on how to operate it when you're out on your own doing your job. Before we get into that, we're going to, we just want to show you the physical size of the components broke down. This is what it looks like broke down, ready for transport. So when you get here that day, this is what you got to expect to load up in your vehicle and take with you. All right, we're about to transition over to a video to show you how to set up the rental system and some of the tips and tricks on how to operate it when you're out on your own. Once we get through that, we're going to come back and show you some of the accessories that we've just recently added, which are lighting. They include some up lights and some dance lights and so forth. So uh, we'll do that right after we show you how to set the rental system up. Hi, I'm Nick. Here set up in front of me is the popular do-it-yourself DJ rental system. The rental system includes two speakers, two speaker stands, a rack which houses a mixer, an amp, and an eight port power supply. We also provide a laptop that comes fully equipped with DJ music and karaoke tracks. And now we're gonna show you just how easy it is to set one of these rental systems up. And now we're gonna to demonstrate to you how to open up and set your tripod speaker stand in which you set your speaker on. This is one of the two speaker stands that you will receive in your rental system. And it does have a few steps that you need to follow, uh, or you could be wrestling this thing for quite some time. But the first thing you would want to do is release your tripod lever, which is right here, closed, open. And the easiest way i found to do it is turn it upside down, set it on the floor, and gently pull some le the legs apart until you can find it where it will open up, until you get it slightly open, about like that. Once you get to this point, flip it back over, and pulling down right here on the leg and holding it here and pulling it up should open your tripod up to the position that you want it. Once, once you get it there and you're ready to lock it, grab your locking lever back and lock that lever. Don't forget to lock that lever. Okay, now your, your speaker stand is opened, locked, and placed, and you're ready to place your speaker onto your speaker stand. On the bottom of your speaker is the insert hole that you must line up onto your aluminum nipple of your speaker stand, just like this. So now you've got your speaker stand opened up, placed, and your speaker on top of your speaker stand. Lastly, before installing your speaker cables, you want to adjust the height of your speaker on your speaker stand. First, you want to place your foot on your tripod brace, one hand holding the upright of the speaker stand, the other hand you'll place on this gray ring and follow, turn it around to where you want to raise it, which is the very first one right there, and then hold here and hold here, and you want to pull up to the desired height, just like that. It does hold itself, but you definitely want to turn this back to lock. So once you've gotten your speakers and your speaker stands mounted and placed in the positions that you want them, next would be your speaker cables. Of course, one end goes to the back of your speaker and one end goes to the back of your amp. We have the rack turned around backwards, easy, easy for you to see. They're color-coded on the back of the amp of where to plug. They're color-coded on the back of the speaker to know where to plug. The speaker cable has two identical ends on each end. They do, however, have two tabs, one smaller than the other one. So pay attention to that. Line those up. The ends of the cable are identical, so it doesn't matter which end goes to which and they go in the ports only one way. Be gentle with these, not too rough, but they will go into the port all the way and slightly turned to the right until you hear the click. That is the back of the amp. Then you would go to the other end of the cable at the speaker and paying attention to the tabs, line them up to the port of the back of the speaker, gently slide that in all the way and a slight turn to the right until you hear the click. That speaker is fully connected to the amp. Okay, and next we're gonna show you how to hook up your microphone. You are supplied two of them. We're gonna show you how to do one of them. Your microphone cable has a male end and a female end. The female end goes to your mic and the male end goes into your mixer. Your microphone has three pins and you align those up the three holes in your female end and gently Push until it pops and clicks. That's your microphone end. We recommend that you use your microphones on your first two channels. 
one and two. So we would take our male end of our microphone cable, line up our three pins, and gently push that in. It does not pop into your mixer. It just securely goes all the way in. It comes out and goes in. Your microphone's hooked up. If you want to use the second mic, follow the same procedure. Now that you got your microphones hooked up, your speakers hooked up, your laptop opened up and booted up, and now you're ready to connect your laptop. And we also supply a second audio cable for in case you want to use a smartphone or a iPad or any other device that you may have music on that you want to play off of. So a second audio cable is supplied for your use on anything that you own. For our laptop, we'll use the quarter inch and the eighth inch. Quarter inch will go into the mixer. We recommend that you use the farthest to the right channel, which would be this channel right here. It's color coded, just as the cable is, and it pops right in, just like that. This would be your volume for your music. And the other end is an eighth inch end, which is similar to a headphone jack, and it'll go into your laptop. Identify two eighth inch ports. Looking closely, one will show a headphone above it. That's the one that you want to install your audio cable into, just like that. And now all of your cables are connected, your laptop's booted, ready to power up your amp and test your system. Okay, so the, the two places in which you'll be pulling cables from and will be needing to replace the cables to will be one, the cable bucket, and two, the laptop bag. So right now, let's talk about the cable bucket first. The components that you pulled out of it and used, we ask that you return back into it. You got your microphone case, which ha has your two microphones in it. Let's get this opened up here. Sorry, I should have started there. So all of these cables that you took out of the bucket, which you might forget during your venue, uh, we're, we're trying to remind you now of what needs to go back in that cable bucket. The two microphones in the case. In most cases, you'll have a power strip. You may or may not use that. You have your main power extension cord. It's your main source of electrical. Your two speaker cables. They go to your speakers, and in most cases, there are two microphone cables, and some there are three, but all three of them, please put back into the cable bucket, and that is a cable bucket fully loaded back, ready for return. Um, this is how you'll get it. This is how you'll pull the cables out. This is what it looks like when you get it, and we ask that you send it back that way as well. A good rule of thumb is if it plugged into your laptop, it goes back in the laptop bag. We supplied two audio cables, which you may, have, may or may not have used both of them, but please don't get them mixed up with the cables that go in the cable bucket, um, like we just went over. If the audio cables, the power supply, the mouse, if it comes with a mouse pad, anything that goes with the laptop or plugs into the laptop, please return in the laptop bag. So thanks a lot for choosing Songbird. We appreciate your business and hope your party was a blast.